Good night again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Another Perspective. It's good to be with you again one more time tonight as we share uh, the Word of God, as we look, you know, at various topics, uh, to see the various um, sides of things, the various views of individuals as we share together as brothers and sisters in Christ. It is good to be with you all again tonight, and I'm really excited about the program. Uh, you know, we started on Monday night, and so far we have been um, seeing all the comments, the calls, everything that has been going on thus far, and we're, I'm very grateful for the feedback that I'm receiving. Uh, positive comments, negative comments, uh, regardless of the comments, I'm grateful for them. Um, comments that will strengthen and cause me to go forward. I'm indeed grateful for those of you who are joining on the live stream at this time. Um, without you, um, the program will not make much sense. And so we're grateful tonight for the privilege that God has given us to be able to share um, on this program another perspective. Um, there are so many persons that would have been a part of the inspiration process. And, um, you know, persons would have encouraged me uh, uh, to go forward with this program. And I'll be having uh, throughout the program persons joining in to share in their in this discussion. Amen. So it's, again, good to be with you tonight. And um, I'm hoping that tonight, well, I'm praying that tonight will be a very beautiful, powerful, power-packed night. Amen. To God be the glory again. Great things he has done. You know, today was such a, a beautiful day, a lovely day. Did some things that I never knew I could do. I, I, I tried um, something very new today. For many of you, it's something that you would have done time and time again but today was my first day i i attempted to lay blocks <laughs> and many many of my church many of my church brethren will will laugh at that because you know um i i am not that kind of individual and so i laid some blocks today yes it was 15 blocks though but i mean i was commended for it and 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 they they the, 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 the person who was there looking on said, listen, young man, you did well because not many persons would do them so neatly. Yes, it took me almost two hours to lay 15 blocks, but um, guess what? Practice becomes perfect and they eventually I'll be able to, to, you know, whenever I have anything to do, I'll be able to, to do it. So I'm grateful for the opportunity today to, 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 to lay some blocks, and, and, and that was exciting for me. Tonight, we have, uh, will be joining us shortly, uh, a gentleman, a prophet, a, a, a preacher, teacher, someone who has been a part of the inspiration process for me. Um, we have not met physically, you know, but he will be joining um, me on the platform in short order, and we have... Uh, brother Prophet O'Shane Ranger, who will be joining us in short order. And so tonight we'll be looking at the topic, uh, is there a true church? If so, what are the identifying marks of this true church? And, and I'm asking the question now for those of you who are joining. Honestly, do you believe that there is a one particular true church and if so what are the identifying marks and then at the end of the pro at the end of um the program tonight uh we will be sharing um some questions and i'm hoping that persons will be able to interact as we go along before we continue let me just welcome uh some of the individuals uh joining me if you would really if you want me to uh, recognize you, uh, just send a comment and um, I will I will do so. And so I'm thanking Kelisha um, for joining. Kelisha Campbell, it's good to have you tonight uh, 
Arlene Young Sam, Minister Young Sam. She's one of my strongest supporters, somebody who prays with me, prays for me. Um, I'm seeing, uh, well, I, that's the only comments I'm seeing thus far. And uh, if there are others, just, you know, just share as you go forward and as we join together on this program. I just want us to begin this program with prayer and then I will share some things with you and then we will invite our guest tonight, um, Oshane, to join us after I would have shared some things with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, oh Lord, we are so grateful for the privilege that you have given us, for the opportunity that we have to join in tonight on this wonderful program. Now, Lord, as we prayed and as I have asked many times, may this program not be one that will cause confusion, but one that will seek to show us that we're all one in Jesus Christ. And so, for Lord, continue to lead, continue to guide, continue to protect us as we go forward in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And so tonight, again, as I would have shared with you, the 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 topic tonight is 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 the is if the if, if there is a true church, um, whether or not uh, there is a true church, and if you believe that there is a true church. Um, what are the identifying marks of of such a church? Uh, I see Mother Henry, um, Beverly Henry joining in. Thank you for, for joining in. And all the rest of you that are on the program tonight, let me see if I can identify uh, some persons. Jennifer, it's good to have you. That's Jennifer Anson there. And so tonight I'll be sharing some things with you. And uh, um, my guests will be sharing as well as we go forward. So let me take the time out to invite to the platform our guest, um, Mr. O'Shane Ranger. Amen. And um, here we have Mr. Ranger joining us. Um, let me apologize for the little bike boys in the background from time to time. <laughs> we will be having a little yeah, bit of that. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. That's really goes. Nice. Amen. Good night, yeah, my brethren, yeah. brother O'Shea. Good night, good night, good, good night. To have you. Good to see you. <laughs> Finally. Yes, yeah. amen, amen, yeah. amen. Might, Thank you. We might not meet literally face to face, but we are yes. seeing each other. And amen. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. Understand? Yes. When I got the call, I said, God, you give the vision, and the man I got running with the vision. Yes. And we are just vessels here, ready and willing to serve. Amen. And tonight, Amen. And tonight um, I pray that this program is will be very inspirational to the body yes. of Christ because this is Amen. a this is a solid topic. Amen. Solid topic. Amen. A lot of people beat around the bush when they come on to this topic. That's very right. Solid That's topic. right. Very solid and indeed. Indeed. There are many sheep out there, many of God children, many of Jesus children who need this answer. Yes. Powerful. Yes. Because, because many persons this? are really confused out there, and we just want them to come to some form of or some level of understanding as mm -hmm. to what really is the body of Christ. But before we go forward, Oshin, can you just tell our viewers tonight just a little bit about yourself? Um, who you are and, and stuff like that as we as we go forward. Well, as you so forth say early on, uh, my name is Oshin Ranger. Um, I am a man of God. Yes, I am a man that lead by the Holy Spirit. Whatever I do, I do by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And well, the title. <laughs> Some people say that I am a prophet, <laughs> but I am just a humble servant of God. Just see myself humble, but the title come with, come with this, <laughs> come with yes, all of yes. this. Yes. It come with all of this. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we try to sleep around it, but it come with the package. But yes, I am just a humble servant of God who just go by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I do nothing without the direction of the Holy Spirit. That's just yes, me. Sir. I don't have a lot of credential to read out to say this and that and this and that. I'm just a humble 
servant of God. And Amen. I rather a relationship with God than a religion. Yes. Understand? First and foremost, I'm not a religious person. And understand, I don't tie myself onto doctrines and to sound doctrines. Because Paul said, let no man put no strings upon you. Any man come with any other new doctrine, Paul will tell you to beware of this. Understand? Jesus himself was not a religious man in the earth. So I can see myself going on forth and forcing religion and doctrine on that's his right. people. Right. So that's just me in a small package. Just a man of faith, a man of faith, a man that lead by the Holy Spirit. Do nothing without it. That's right. All right. So thank you so much for that, um, O'Shane, as we are going forward. And so um, I took the liberty to do some research um, yeah. on the various um, churches. And, you know, surprisingly, um, viewers, surprisingly, O'Shane, and those of you who are joining us on Facebook, surprisingly, there are so many churches that claim to be the one true one church of church. God. Yes, Come there are so on. many. And, you know, I'm puzzled, I'm puzzled as to how did how do we come to the conclusion of being the one true church and just as i'm as i'm going forward let me just see if i can um list out just a few of 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 of, of those churches we have um churches like the roman catholic church that says that they are the one true church we have the um orthodox church the Luth lutheran church we have the My baptist God. church um, we have what we call the Amish Church Amish. or the Anabaptist Church or, or the Amish, whatever we call them. We have Quakers, we have Methodists, um, we have uh Church of the Latter day Saints that say they are the um church of God. We have the Seventh day Adventist Church that uh, um declares. these many plenty churches that declares themselves to be the true church of god which of them is really the true church in fact mm -hmm. um all of them will tell you that god inspired them to be um, um to be where they are today amen so let amen. me talk to you now if you were to to identify a true church what would you say are some marks that you would be looking for that you believe would be described as the church of god well wow, good one what would i describe as church of god first and foremost let me say this let me say this first and foremost jesus said many sheep a via for different flock. How many people out there know what that means? Many sheep have I have a different flock. How many of God's people know what that means? People think in uh, okay, we see in um Revelation where you have different different church, the Bible speaks of um all these different churches, you know, and we speak of the characters of the church, what he saw in the church at the time. And he judge them accordingly. But if you check every single church right around the world, I hear, if I start in Jamaica, right in Jamaica, every single church, everywhere, if you check every church, right? Each church have a different tradition, have a different, they do things different. Yes. If, if you go to one man church, his way is different. And the Baba saying to you, you can't go, a man, yard, go tell him how to run him yard. Mm -hmm. Understand? Yes. That's right. So each man, some, 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 some of these people, they, they move by tradition, what they, 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 they passed up before and the pastor before and the pastor before passed down, but tradition come down the line. But yes. if, 
we look into the life of Christ really and truly. What Christ professed when he was on the earth. He professed the love of his father. Yes. He professed, he teaches us the way to the father. He teaches us the way we must treat each other. Mm -hmm. He teaches us the way that we must share. Yes. Understand? That's right. I think, this is purely me, think, when he said that many sheep have I have a different flock. God have a, have, he have a man, have a woman, everywhere. Mm -hmm. everywhere you can find a servant of God everywhere when I said everywhere, we put it on a broader scale the God of a servant even in, um, in the Muslim camp <laughs> even in the Muslim camp him have a servant, that man might not come to the full knowledge yet or somebody have not introduced him to the truth yes. yet, Yes. but God of a man there Yes. and when, when the truth come to him even watching this program tonight, the truth come to him by some way, some mean, and he can't get converted and stand for God. Some way, some way. Yeah, yes. even down That's in right. Buddha, among Buddha camp, among down in China, there's a man there, but he might not come to the knowledge yet. Because Jesus said this gospel will preach the four corners of the hurt. He might mm -hmm. yes. not come to that knowledge yet, said He's a servant of God, or the word, somebody have not bring the word to him, introduce him to this man called Jesus Christ. As it. So, everywhere on this earth, there is a servant of God. Of God. Because look, when I, when I think about it, why did not God go down to a righteous man's house to call Abraham from a righteous man's house? He called Abraham from a man that is background, a high dollar. And he unpicked Abraham from that house. That means mm -hmm. he had a man there. Noah, in Noah time, I think Noah, Noah was, people would say Noah, oh, Noah was a man that was very righteous and he was in tune with God and everything. Noah's heart was in the right place. God searched the whole earth and find one man that heart was in the right place. His mind was in the right place. And God yes. could select Noah from among a land of God. Because at that time, at that time, God, he was vexed as all oh, 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 mankind corrupt the earth. And even mm -hmm. in, his, in the scripture, he said, he grieved him all that, oh, he, he, he create man. Vex. Let's, let's get real. Him vex. Yes, vex. Vex, man. Back. Mm -hmm. Vex, vex, so in great man. But he found a man there. Fast forward from that. Abraham time passed. Going back to Moses' time, he found a man there. Moses born. Raised in Egypt. In all of the inspiration of the Egyptian, taught by Egyptian, heat like Egyptian, dress like yes. Egyptian, walk like Egyptian. Yes. Yes. And God found a man there in the mm -hmm. midst of all that. Raise him up, send him back to his people for his purpose. Yes. So, so essentially, so essentially what you're saying is that no matter where you are, God has a person there. No matter which church you are serving in, no matter which country you learn, serve you, you are at, no matter what um, religion you might find yourself in, God exactly. as a man, man somewhere there. there. So, yeah. so, so it's very possible then that while many of us are are, are beating up ourselves, thinking that we are, um, you know, at the right place, um, yes. we are, you know saved and sanctified and stuff like that just because we're attached to a, attached to a church it, it may not necessarily be so all right i want i want to share some things um with my with my viewers viewers tonight um i'm just going to jump into a little bit of powerpoint here that i have i won't be sharing the screen um uh because of the various activities that um i have to be doing all right so i'm asking the question what makes a church, a true church of God. What makes a church a true church of God? 
right? What makes a church a true church of God? And while you are there considering that question, I want to look at something um, just to share with my viewers that the expression <clears throat> um, one true church or the true church uh, refers to a church that exerts its position or asserts its position, a position that the authority that they have are given to them by Jesus Christ. And that they have been solely picked out mm -hmm. by Jesus Christ to operate in this time, in this time, as the yeah. church that is standing above every others. And, 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 and the reality of it is some will tell you that they have been given this position because of what has been taking place in our world. And so many will tell you that they are the true church because it is Jesus that yes. has established them um, to be the true church, right? And so I, 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 I found a particular scripture, um, Oshane and viewers, um, taken from the book of John, um, John chapter 17. And I don't know if anybody would, I don't know if, you you'd want to read it let me let me see if i can find that scripture quickly john chapter 17 as we share in that share that scripture quickly john chapter 17 i'll be reading verse um 21 for those of you who have your bibles with you you know we can use the what you call it now the the smartphones and these things John chapter 17. Let me let me read um verse 21 there. Um in fact, let me let me let me not start at 21. In fact, let me start at um verse 15. Let me start at 15. 15 is fair. He says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, and them here is speaking of the disciples, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And so he says, sanctify them through thy truth, for thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Then he says, neither pray I for these alone, which are his disciples, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I fell in love with that. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one. May even God. as we are one. Watch this now. Thank you, Jesus. I give them Thou in me, that they may be perfect in one, and that the Thank world you. may know that thou hast sent me and has loved me as thou hast loved them. Amen. You know, when I saw that scripture, when I saw that scripture with everything that everybody will share and everything that everybody will talk about, that scripture spoke volume to me. And I'll tell you the reason why it did. The fact that Jesus says that everybody who believes in me because of what you, the disciples, are going to preach. I believe, this is my personal opinion, yes. right? I believe that God instituted his church right there. Somewhere, don't, I don't know. I don't know if anybody believes that. Um, and you can share. You know, you can, you can, you know, make your, 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 your statement. Um so 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 anybody who believes differently you can share but but what jesus is asking that for everybody who will believe in his word for everybody who believe in him for everybody who will be preached to by the disciples jesus prayed that we all will be one oh. now i'm asking the question Oshie, do we have to be one in belief do we have to believe the same thing to be one and when i say the same thing do we all have to be Sabbath keepers in order for us to be one? 
or do we all have to be Sunday worshippers in order for us to be one? And when I say, I don't even like the term Sunday worshippers. Do persons have to worship on Sunday to be considered one? Um, do what does do we need to be baptized in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in order to be one, or do we need to be baptized in in Jesus' name alone in order for us to be one? What do you think um, this oneness means? And anybody else who would like to share, um, please, you can join in and as we do so. Question. Does the same Holy Spirit, does the same Holy Ghost that manifests Sunday morning, is not the same Holy Ghost manifest Saturday morning? That's, that's a good question. That's a good question. That's what I would the like to know. Is, is, it, is it the same spirit that inspired the man on a Sunday? Is it the same spirit that inspires the man on a Saturday? Saturday. You see, that question is a golden question. Can I look at this. Remember when Jesus sat at the well and met the woman at the well? I love talking about the woman at the well. And she said to him that your people worship in jerusalem my people worship in the mountains and jesus said woman the hour has now come no no the hour has come are coming where you're no longer gonna worship in jerusalem or in the mountain but they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth mm -hmm. and this time that we live in is proof of that. Proof. This whole pandemic time is a very proof of that. Where you cannot go to church at time. You cannot depend on Saturday. And you cannot depend on Sunday. You have to, in your room, or in your little prayer chamber, your little prayer closet, is not the same, is not the same Holy Spirit who manifests Saturday morning in the church is not the same Holy Spirit manifest Sunday morning? Is not that same Holy yes, Spirit yes. manifest in your room mm -hmm. by your bedside? When you're calling you know, out, when let's get real, when brother so and so is not there to call upon, and sister so and so is not there to call upon, deacon so and so is not there to call upon, evangelist so and so is not there to call upon. You can't get the prayer mothers because guess what? In this time, you have to know God for yourself. So this is the hour that he's speaking of. Spirit and intrude. Understand? They that worship me. So the same Holy Spirit that rests on you on the Sunday morning, on the Saturday morning, is mm -hmm. the same Holy Spirit come visit you by the bedside, in the closet, right, right. in the corner, wherever you be like the altar. He that dwell it in the secret place, that little secret place, where you seek God. It's the same Spirit. That yes. fell on the Jew, also mm -hmm. fell on the Gentile. When right. Acts 10, Acts 10, I don't want to go too fast and too far. In Acts 10, when, when God speak to Peter, Peter, rise, kill and eat. When the platter came down with the meat, the four, all the creed, the meat, and Peter said, Master, I don't eat these things. These things are common. And he said, whatever I cleanse, I bless. Don't call it common or unclean. Peter was there meditating. And he was wondering, what is God is what, what God what God is what God is trying to say to me? Because I don't eat this. This we don't eat right. this kind of meat. Yeah, I know my kind of meat this. And the Holy Spirit speak to him and said, I send some man out the gate to you. Speak to them and go with them. And Peter is a man that he follow the direction of the Holy Spirit. So in, all right, I'm up here and we'll go with them. When he reached to that place, they said to him that I had a vision. A certain man said, I have a vision. And the Lord said, we must send for you and you will tell us all things. Peter was skeptical at first and he was saying, because Jews and Gentiles don't mix. Island mm -hmm. water don't mix. don't mix. Saturday mm -hmm. and Sunday don't mix. Since Saturday and Sunday don't mix. So in his mind, he's skeptic. Understand? And when him start to tell them the, all the good things about the Lord and minister to them, 
the Bible said the Holy Spirit rests upon the Jew and also the Gentile. Mm -hmm. And Peter stepped back and now got the revelation and said, No, I know that God is no respect of men. The ah, same spirit that you. fell upon the Jew also fell upon the Gentile. Island water, Saturday and Sunday. Understand? In his yeah. mind at first, he was skeptic. Said, no, this is not a mix. Mountain, Jerusalem, this is not a mix. Understand? Jew, Gentile, this is not a mix. Understand? But he recognized when he said the Holy Spirit rest upon the Jew, also rest upon the Gentile. Rest upon the Gentile. Indeed, indeed. That he could go back and give an account to his brethren. Because when he go back, the brethren was skeptical and said, oh, you heat with these people it's not lawful lawful it's not lawful to eat with these people because they raise up on the custom of the law yeah and the teaching of the law it was embedded in them it inside of them so when mm -hmm. god showed peter said i am no respect of man the same spirit that fall on saturday is the same spirit that fall upon no, Sunday. yeah yeah let me just read a few of these comments that are there um um arlene young sam is saying isn't it that we're going to, well she said isn't the same heaven we are going or there is a separate heaven sometimes we all <laughs> believe in christian, we see as if christianity has about a hundred and something different heavens because <laughs> um the pentecostals say they are going to heaven um the baptists say they're going to heaven um uh, the, the Seventh day Adventists say they're going to heaven, Church of God say they're going to heaven. Um, the Catholic will tell you that but you have various um ways, various places to go before you can get to, to heaven or something of the sort. And everybody have a heaven, and they'll tell you that if you're not doing what we say, you can't make it to that heaven. Bridging, hey. I know people will be upset with me, but listen, let me talk the truth. And let me just say it right across it. Talk the truth. Talk the truth. I don't want to go to no church of God heaven, no Baptist heaven. Talk the truth, man. Come on, man. No body heaven with that where, where Jesus is. Come on. You're, if you're Jesus rather... is not there. And, and, and I want to say this. I want Come to on. say this. Many of us are professing to be the yes. true church. And yet mm -hmm. still... Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm speaking to individuals now, I'm speaking to individuals. Yeah. Many individuals are professing to be a part of the true church, and yet still they don't they love nobody. Come on, a man. Speaking of tongues like crazy, they don't love Come nobody. On, man. Come Keep on, someone man. like crazy, they don't love Come nobody. On, they don't Come take on, care man. of people, they don't love people, and yet still we are so strong on what we believe but yet still the things that really matters, we are not firm on them, such as love your neighbor and your enemies as you love yourself. Hmm? They have no charity. Many persons are, are, are not loving. And I, I'll share some, let me just share some more uh, comments here. Um, Verona Beach says that, yes, different manifestations, but the same spirit right um let me see any more any more comments right here judith judith rowe says every denomination have different beliefs but we are we all are worshiping the same god i think that they are confusing us and that is one of the challenges i have um the confusion that we have in christendom and i and i and i really i'm really wondering i have a question that i'm going to ask later on i don't want to ask it so quick yet because <laughs> we still have um a lengthy way to go and i yeah. still have another guest to join me um while you you'll you still be on while the, the guest comes I, i'm not i've not seen him just yet popping up but uh but let me let me read some things that i have um my my dear brother Oshane and, and 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 guests who are here um the the roman catholic church um teaches 
that Christ has set them up as the on the one true church, the only true church, and that this church of Christ um, is the Catholic Church um, with the with the Roman Pontiff as its supreme. Um, and so the, the the church, along with its bishops and the Pope and stuff like that, believe that they are the one true church um, that is in the world today. And that is according to the catechism of the, the Catholic Church. I don't know if anybody has ever heard anybody from the Catholic Church who would have stood their grounds to say that, listen, the Catholic Church is the one true church of God. Um, there are some things we can agree on and disagree on. And the fact of the matter is probably the longest church that stands um, today is the Roman Catholic Church, right? Right, if, and, and, and persons can correct me if I'm wrong, others can share if they if they know of, of any other. Um, so the Roman Catholic Church says that they are the true church. Not only does the Roman Catholic Church says that, but the Eastern Orthodox Church, um, officially known as the Orthodox Catholic Church, identifies its its confederative communion of the Orthodox churches as the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Church. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. My gosh. <laughs> that's, and, and that's just the Eastern Orthodox Church, right? Um, the Lutheran Church views itself as the main trunk of the historical Christian tree founded by Christ and the apostles, holding that during the Reformation, the Church of Rome fell away. And that, and that, that church, the Lutheran, the Lutheran Church, became the true church after a particular time has passed. Um, the Lutheran Church teaches that the faith as confessed by Luther and his followers is nothing new but the true Catholic faith and that their churches represent the true Catholic or universal church. Listen, church strong? Strong. Strong. It says that they are the true church and that is the, 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 the Lutheran church. Um, the Baptist church says that, listen, they are of Baptist succession. Um, and that would be known, that is known as landmarkism or landmarkism. Um, they argue that their history can be traced across the centuries to New Testament times. And they claim that Baptists have represented the true church that has been presented in every period of history. These Baptists maintain that those who held their views throughout history, including the, the, the mountain, they have the different, different, um, groups of, of, of Baptist people that have held their views throughout the years, that these persons were persecuted for their faith and their belief. And they, believe, they, they, they declare themselves of having the grand distinguishing mark of the true church of God. Amen. Now we've gone about three or four churches so far, right? Mm -hmm. That declares themselves already. <laughs> as a true church yeah. right. as a true church yeah. and, and these churches so far are churches that worship on the, the first day of the week and not the seventh day of the week right and yeah. and, and later on in the program sometime um, in the future we'll be looking at those topics you know the, the, the days um, how important are they are they important we'll be looking at those things you know um where they coming from and stuff like that so 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 many churches are declaring themselves as the true church let me continue um Oshin, to share just a little bit of the views on the other church um the amish church um which is what they call the anabaptist church or anabaptist christians and um, they believe that the established church became corrupt it was infected and it started to displease God. And so they separated themselves from the Baptist church. And because of that separation, 
they now started to practice um the real uh or the lifestyle that christ has asked them to live and by so doing they became the true church and stands as the true church in this generation uh -uh. they believe that the, 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 the scripture which says that they are of a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation um belongs to them the true church and this church calls us to be separate and completely different from a blind perverted world ah strong you know you see the you see, from, i think you know, i think from in the book of acts where when the church first got the name with this they took on the name to the body of christ mm -hmm. understand that they, they they call the church is christian and took on the name in antioch understand before mm -hmm. Before all these, before they had a title and the name, we are all believers, virgin. Jesus called us friend. In those times, the apostles, they all come together and every man that had something, bring it to the apostle's feet and no man was lacking of anything. Because if I have mango and you have banana, we all share, right? So no man was lacking anything in that time. But when I look at it, Listen, all these name of all these church that you call a while ago, and everybody professing that they are the true church. When Jesus asked him, say, Who do men say that I am? And Peter revealed, Thou art the Christ. He said, Flesh and blood did not reveal these things unto you. Mm. Everybody professing. That their church is the true church. My way is the true church. Some, some, my way are the highway. Is the true yeah. way. But I often wonder if Christ to appear right now, right Which now. Listen, if Christ to come right now, is it him? him go look and say, "Come, come, apostolic." And apostolic, I go mark in your forehead. Come Presbyterian and Presbyterian and go mark in your family. Come Jehovah Witness and Jehovah Witness and go mark in your family. Come Jesus only. Jesus only go mark in your family. You know, you're right now you're married. No. No. If Christ to come, oh no, we go on up as bridging, believer, beloved. Well good, well done, my good and faithful servant. We all go up as servant. Yes. There is no man leaving the face of this earth with the name Pentecost here. Presbyterian here, Baptist here, we are all one brothers and sisters underneath the, the good father. We are all one. You Everyone know, uh, professing, professing say, hey, oh, my way is the right way. That's why there's so much confusion in the church. The time we spend professing that my doctrine is the right doctrine, my church is the right church, we should be more like Christ, get Christ-like characters. Yes. We don't that's need right. some that's people. Right. It's time for people to stand up and say, "Here, yeah, well, I don't need, I don't need a religion. I need a relationship." Relation, you know, that's exactly where I wanted to go. Um, this thought came to me while you were you were you were speaking. Um, I started to imagine um, when 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 we're going to Sweet Beulah Land, and and God is bringing up, bringing in His faithful. That um you know you have you know you know this little sign this little doorpost that you have this door um thing that you have that with the name on it when yes. you go to somebody's office you say doctor so and so and, and yes. stuff like that so I'm looking at the different gates now and I'm looking on the gate and I say Pentecostals you walk through that gate Baptist <laughs> walk through walk that through. gate Seventh Day Adventist you walk through walk that through gate that, and that all gate. of that I want to tell somebody today. They, 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 and I, and I, and I don't. I, 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 know persons have their various views, but this is mine. No matter the name you hold, no matter the denomination that you are part of, that will never gain you entrance into the kingdom of God. Can I tell somebody what will gain them entrance into the kingdom of God? Say it, it, has it. Say it, has it has to be and must be 
a relationship with Jesus Christ. That one deserve a round of applause. And, 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 I, and I share something. I share something with you, Oshin. I share something with you. I've had the experience of Adventist praying for me, and things happen. Yes. I've had the experience of non-Adventist praying for me, and things yeah. happen. Yeah. I've had yeah. the experience yeah. of Adventist praying for me, and not nothing. Not nothing. And I've had the experience of persons who are not Adventist spring and nothing do happen. And I've I I I and and I've prayed for myself things happen and I've yes. prayed for myself and things don't happen. You've prayed yes. for me. Oh shit. Yes. You've prayed for me and I've prayed yes. with you. We've yes. prayed together. And, yes. and we don't necessarily believe the same things. We don't necessarily um see eye to eye on everything. But I on bet everything. you something that if we look at everything from another perspective, that yes. we will see that you and I will have one thing in common. And guess what that is? Yes. The love that Jesus says we ought to have. Come on. If you check it, if you check it, every church preaches and teaches love. Yes. Every church preaches and teaches true worship. Yes. Every church preaches and teaches that we will all go, we're all going to heaven one day, or we're going to Sweet Beulah Land one day. Every church has that in common. Why is it then that we're so focused on division or on, on doctrines that are so divisive? Doctrines that divide us. Is it that then? Um, it is the doctrines that dictates where you will end up in um where you'll end up at the end of your journey here on earth all right before we continue Oshin, let me just read some more um churches that declares themselves as the true church of god all right um this one is the uh the the, the mormons church i, I believe oh, the quakers wow. um let me let me let me read what they're what, well let me jump from from this one uh the methodist says uh, Methodist preachers are known for pro prom promulgating the doctrines of the new birth and the entire sanctification to the public at events such as tent revivals and camp meetings and stuff like that, which they believe is the reason that God raised them up into existence. Methodists affirm belief in the one true church, apostolic and universal. Viewing their churches as constituting a privileged branch of this true church <laughs> with regard to the position of Methodism within Christendom. So Methodist says that listen, they are a part of God, a part of the, the one true church, right? The founder of the movement, John Wesley, once noted that what God had achieved in the development of methodism was no mere human endeavor but the work of god himself and so the founder of the church um john wesley the methodist church says that listen it is god who worked through him and through others for the formation of the methodist church now there's a i have a, i have a few friends um Oshin and viewers i have a few friends who will be establishing church and um one of my friend launched um a church um a, a few months ago and he said that god inspired him to to launch that church and another friend of mine shared that god inspired him to launch a church no i'm using those two friends because one friend believes that when women come to church their head must be properly covered Mm -hmm. And another friend says that, listen, um, when they come to church, the woman don't have to cover her head because her hair is her covering. Now I'm asking the public, I'm asking Facebook viewers, I'm asking those looking on tonight, which one of them are talking the truth? Which one of them right? Which one of them is really inspired by God? Which one of them is not inspired by God? Or are, are, are both of them inspired? I mean, the brethren them say, look here, 
God tell them to open one church. Now I'm just saying yeah. they have different views. I know they have different views because I talk to them. They talk with me, so I know that they have different views. And there are more persons. Which one of them right? Which one of them true? Good question. That's a very, and very good question. I see, I see my 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 friend um Kevin um joining us. Um Kevin, I will be inviting you to join soon as soon as you indicate um when you're ready. Um we'll be allowing you to join in on the program um so that you can share with us tonight your views on what um the true church is or which church you believe is the true church all right so 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 i'm asking which one is really right you know that question I, I, a while ago that question a while ago when i think about that question a while ago um about the covering one believe that the human head must cover i want to believe that our hair is already our covering when i think about it they say different strokes for different folks i understand that right but when i look at this and said i think to myself and if god if you're going before a king naturally in the earth right you're going to adorn yourself a certain manner. Right? You hear me? Yeah, man, I hear you. Hear you? I hear you. Go ahead, if you're go going ahead, before go a king in the earth, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to adorn yourself to go before the king, right? Properly. Right. Because, before you, because you're going before a king. Right. So you're going to put on your proper apparel and go before a king. Right. So when you're going in the presence of God, you're going to adorn yourself in a certain manner to go before the heavenly king, right? But the difference is, what I learned along the way, the difference is, when you go to God, there's a certain requirement that you must come before him. But when he comes to you, even if you're in your bathroom naked as the day you're born, that's where and when he's going to speak to you. Yes. That sounds like two different things, right? Mm -hmm. Even if you're naked as the day you're born and decides a dear so I way more and talk to you. Remember, I know she not have she in her bathroom with with piece of cloth over her head a beard and I show her boy, God might talk right. to me now, you know. So me I go put put on a um a something over my head or me go put on the church hat or me go put on a prayer shawl and beard and you can God might talk to me I know. So But naturally mm -hmm. that's him coming down to you as a physical to visit you because the bible said yeah. god understand it, it came it come down in the cool of day and speak with man understand right, but when right. we are going up to him we he is expecting to us to come before him in a certain certain manner mm -hmm. so as i said two different so two different right. beliefs. Two different views and 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 the, the program no, is crap 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 the program is so set up, um, O'Shane, that um, we we can we will be able to look at the different views, the different perspectives um, as it relates to um, whether a woman should um, have her head covered or not. And so we'll be seeing the various views from others as to what they believe and why they believe what they believe, right? Because I have my views on that, but I will not be sharing my views just yet until we mm -hmm. will be doing that section of the program on okay. another perspective all right um uh, uh, i see kevin as uh, is, is, is not um, on the platform is not backstage as soon as he comes back we'll be inviting him to to join us on the platform all right let me continue to read just a little bit as to what some other churches are saying now you have a set of people that we call restorationist or restorationism um and restoration is is in, uh, started with a, a gentleman by the name of joseph smith um and, and it came from one of his first visions he said that jesus uh, and god the father told him that all the churches of his day were corrupt and abominable Imagine that 
Joseph Smith says that God and Jesus tell him say, mm -hmm. all the other churches at that time was mm -hmm. corrupt and abominable. Abominable. Mm -hmm. And so restorationism is a broad category of churches originating during the second great awakening that char characterized themselves as a return to very early Christianity after the true faith was lost in a great apostasy. And so we have among these persons, churches like the Church of Christ, um, Stone Campbell Movement, and the Latter-day Saints that we call Mormonism. All right? So even these people that have um, Joseph Smith as their leader believe themselves to be the true church. Now, question to everybody. I'm, I'm asking this question to my viewers. How many prophets have you heard or how many persons have come across declaring themselves to be prophets and prophetesses to say that God asked them to establish their church? How much are they? Enough. 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 How do I tell those believers who believe in Joseph Smith that they are wrong and they are incorrect? And God only raised up one other prophet. How do you know that God raised up one other prophet when it was the prophet who said to you that a God raised up one prophet? How do you know? These are the questions I'm asking. How do you know? Why do we separate ourselves because of another prophet? When Jesus requires and asks us to be joined together as one. One Israel. One Israel. One people under God. Right? And so let me just read one more and then we invite um Kevin to join us um on the on the platform. Um we're inviting Kevin now. Let me just continue to read while while my 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 good my friend Kevin is coming. All right, so the seventh day Adventist church, um no not formally SDA or known as SDA, um calls itself to be the one true church. It specifically teaches that it is the final remnant um, of God's true church spanning the centuries. Seventh-day Adventist eschatology promulgates the idea that in the end times there will be and there will be a growing opposition between the true church and the apostate churches. According to Seventh-day Adventist, Seventh Adventist theology, these apostates are referred to as Babylon, which they state is an amalgam or amalgamation of religions, including other Christian denominations that worship on Sunday rather than on the Sabbath, which is identified by Seventh-day Adventists as Saturday, the seventh day of the week. The Seventh-day Adventist Church, in their view, has drawn substantially on the biblical text, especially on book, on the biblical text, especially the books of Daniel and Revelation, to argue for its own status and true remnant as the true remnant church, which has a divine commission both to exist and to preach is a pot is a its apocalyptic me message to the world at large and so seven day adventists believe that and we we looked at joseph smith also formed the church of the latter day saints in uh, um uh or the restoration 1830 when he got a vision while he was young joseph smith declared that god invited him or that god gave him a vision to start the true church so what, what is separation for? What is the purpose of uh, look the at, separation? Why are we separated? It no matter one name, Satan kingdom go by. It no matter one name, Satan kingdom go by. You notice, notice it's one organization. You couldn't call mm -hmm. it Illuminati. You couldn't call it, you name it. Class clan, you could and call all the names that they go by known by in the earth. All of these, right? Yes, because God strictly assured that look at this 
Satan kingdom is not divided. Why is the church <laughs> divided? Why? No care what name Satan give his kingdom. It's one kingdom. But the church is fighting against itself. Mm -hmm. Everybody want to make their mark that I was here, I was here, I am here, my way, my yes. way. But the kingdom of darkness, the darkness is united. But and the kingdom that represents heaven is divided. Divided, my gosh. Divided, just, we we fall, but united exactly. we stand. That's right. You know, and you know when when the Bible commissioned us to go into all the world to preach i'm wondering if it was really just a specific group of of, of people um if there's anybody who would like to share um i know many persons won't join in on programs like these because um well not even joining but won't really give much comments on programs like these because of the the nature of of, of it and stuff like that but you know persons can feel free to share um we're not stopping anybody from from sending a message that you want to join in with us you want to share you want to ha have your voice heard um i see uh orlando orlando robinson says that um it's separation starts from acts that the, the church's separation started from acts um um that's 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 his point of view and everything yeah. You know, I said that early on. I think I said that early on. Yeah. All right. Let me let me let me just share a little bit more with you. Um, as I ask a few few questions. This is where my good friend um Kevin would, would, would be welcomed, but I'm not seeing him. All right, let's look at first Corinthians um one. And 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 I want to I want to ask the platform, um, do you believe that this is speaking to a specific church or did god speak this into christendom or or what was this for christendom let's go again first corinthians um one all right so it says no I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. All right, so we understand, we know where this is coming from. For those, those persons who are theologians and Bible readers and avid Bible readers, they can tell you, who Paul was speaking to and all these things and, and many scriptures we will draw and I'm being fair to scripture to, tonight because many persons use scripture um, Oshane and viewers to back what they believe and what they think is right yeah and so if the scripture fits they'll use it if it doesn't fit they'll not use it right and we see that happening with various um, preachers and teachers and 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 um denominations and stuff if the scripture fits they use it but if it doesn't fit they don't use it and there is hardly there is hardly any denomination that i have come across that has been able to utilize every single aspect of scripture and it don't pose a challenge every single aspect there's hardly any church that I have met that has been able to use every single aspect of scripture and it don't pose a challenge. Some, some right? challenge. Right. So basically, I'm asking the question to my viewers. Come, let me see the comments. Let me see the comments. Based on Corinthians chapter 1, what do you think? Do you think it is speaking to a particular church? Do you think, um, Minister, um, let me ask Tamar, Tamar, do you believe it is speaking to search of life? Um, for those other persons, do you believe it is speaking to um we call it now the, the Seventh-day Adventists, whatever church it is that you're part of, do you believe that um it is speaking to you specifically alone? Um, anybody wants to share? I, I'm not 
Um, so my 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 good friend Kevin is having some struggle, some, some challenges joining us. Um, I'm hoping that it can it, it will it will come up. Um, we're, we're we're trying, my brother. We're trying to to get you on the platform. We're trying to get you on the platform. All right, I'm not seeing any more comments thus far. I, I don't know if anybody else wants to join in um, by a commenting um, or maybe they are typing. I, I, I hope so. Um, Tamar, um, Tamar says, I believe it's speaking to all Christians. Um, speaking to all Christians. Let me read. Let me read what it says again. First Corinthians um, 1 verse 10 says now i beseech you brethren by the name of our lord jesus christ that ye all speak the same come on the same thing that there be no divisions among you but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment now for me who is not a we are a certified um, big top um, theologian with <laughs> this and yeah. that and all manner of things. Can somebody who um, is more eloquent than I, who is on the program, just tell me what do you think this script, particular script, scripture is saying? Christendom. Um, Christendom on a whole. Um, says uh uh on Mana whole i don't believe um it's it's aim it's aimed at any one church or body because we know that he was speaking to a group of persons but we use the same scripture we use these scriptures all the information all the letters that paul has has written to various churches to guide us today amen and i think it's fair that if paul was here today um he would be speaking to christendom to the church of christ to say listen this whole thing won't i use that i divide each other and i confuse people why why are you doing it if jesus is the call if jesus was to step out of heaven and and come back as a man today at which church you would have got that me i wonder which one which one and i'll share why i'll share something with you um and coming furthermore um as it relates to what we will be discussing on sabbath and sunday um i'll be sharing this again but i'm sharing this i'm sharing this today i'm sharing it now i have a challenge right i have a challenge and the challenge is um when it comes to sabbath keeping I have a challenge because the, the, the Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 20 that we must remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt... And listen, man, remember them things I know. Where the things where you learn do not come out of your brain. As a, as a Seventh-day Adventist man, you remember these things. Right? Yes. Thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy cattle, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant. Now, in stranger that is within thy gates, for in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and he made it holy. The question, the challenge I have today is that Adventists um, vocalize so strongly that the Sabbath must be kept. And I'm putting this one little thing out. When I go to church on Sabbath, and I'm using the microphone and using electricity. I'm using all these things. <laughs> Am I not requiring somebody Ooh. to make a public service or somebody to be at work to monitor that? That's it. That's it. Um, then now there are other persons who are sick and in hospital. So my nurses and my doctors <laughs> have to be in the hospital. Based on the fact that somebody needs to be at JPS to monitor these things, my police officers are working, my nurses are working. Um, not all of them have their own transportation, so they will have to be driven to work and to other places and stuff like that. So it is going to be it's going to require now the taxi man to be on the road. 
are we going to ask him to to drive free we could we could, we could. but if he drives free he's going to need gas are we going to ask petro jam now to produce um free gas the police officers who are working and the nurses who are working and the man at jps who is working to facilitate us being at church um they are going to need something to eat who is going to cook the food for them they'll have to probably prepare that from the night before so that they can have their meals um on such day on 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 the sabbath and stuff like that but they'll be working and not only them but many other persons um would be doing that all right i see my friend kevin is available he's joining us now he's using um another uh another um yeah. phone another, another phone and and that is fine that is fine i think i can i think i can rename um you here uh so let me try this up here and see how much skills i can employ i hope i spell your your, your last name correct kevin um mtkoi yes man you're bright yeah. you know <laughs> <laughs> amen amen yeah, good yes, to man. see you my friend kevin thank you right. for joining i know you had your your challenges and stuff like that so just before we continue with you kevin let me just finish up what i was sharing so yeah, my right, challenge right. is my challenge is how do we tell um how, how, how do we work that out you know so i i drew the conclusion that listen if, if, if i'm going to be such a strong advocate for sabbath keeping better me rest better me stay better me go and get out and go chill you know if I'm going to do that, so <laughs> I, I I'm just um bringing that out there as some things that 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 you know bothered me, I, 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 I bothered me a lot. Go ahead. Um, can, can I share on that? Yes, I would like to share on that. Um, because I like the way you bring it across a while ago. God bless your heart. The way you bring it across a while ago. You couldn't bring it across any better than that. Because when I because when I think about it, I I say, I often say, my people perish because lack of knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. That's what the word of God said. And if they study history, I know about a little about history that in the old days, if you spit, and your spit bore a hole in the dirt on the Sabbath, you break the Sabbath, right? <laughs> if you spit. And you spit, break the dirt, you break the Sabbath, the Sabbath, right? In those days, the Sabbath was so serious, the law was so seriously enforced that Jesus was there with them, declaring that I am the Lord of the Sabbath. The word Sabbath means rest. And Jesus was simply telling them, rest in me. Rest in me. Yes. Understand? As you said, if you take a taxi, you put the taxi man to work. If you take a bus, you put the bus man to work. Because it is said that any tool for you or anything for you that work on the Sabbath, you break the Sabbath. Jesus hungry. Yes. And he plucked the corn and he ate them. And himself, did it's not lawful to, to do that. And Jesus said, didn't you not hear what David and his servant do? When 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 them hungry, them he issue bread. Him ask again if you have an ass or a donkey and it dropping at the hole on the Sabbath, and it's your only mean of transportation. Would you not take up that you hypocrites? Would you not take out that ass or that donkey? He go back and again, and he did all his greatest work on the Sabbath and said, while my Father in heaven is working, so am I working. He was simply saying that I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Rest in me. Abide in me as I abide in you. What are you going to say? If it's, if it's on the Sabbath, you pull the window and look outside. You see your brother drop down at the gate. You go lock the window and say, Today I'm a Sabbath, you know. <laughs> now go there, go take him up. I don't care. A cup of water go give. Go Jesus give. asked, is it, is it lawful? Is it better to go, do good than the Sabbath or to do evil? All right, so we'll land it, we'll land it, Ocean. So we're not going to 
stray too far to this because we're going to have a, a, a discussion on, on that at another time. So we can invite you to come back. But uh, my friend <laughs> Kevin is here. Kevin. Yes. Big up, man. Good to see you. It's good to have you. Um, thank you so much for, for joining on the program, Another Perspective. Um, Kevin, we're looking at um, the issue of, is there a true church? If so, um, what are the identifying marks of a true church? Are, are, what are your views on this whole issue of church and true church and all these things? Talk to me, my brother. Just, just let it go. All right. Listen, everything and all the schools of thought. You see, oh, all your Kevin. Yeah. Sorry. Could you just introduce yourself to the to the to those who, who don't know you? Just a little, just a small introduction. All right. My name is Kevin McCoy. I was a Seventh Day Adventist for fourteen years. I was a lay preacher, Bible worker, singing evangelist. Um, I love God. So as a youngster. Went to many churches as an adult, about mm -hmm. say 20 Methodist, right. Pentecostal, Baptist, Jehovah Witness, Mormon, you name it. And I, my cousin was an Adventist, so you know, I was sensitized to that. So I tried Seventh day Adventist because, apart from Rasta, Seventh day Adventist would be the closest, right? As a church, right? No, so I've studied. The, the, the Seventh-day Adventist doctrine, I've read a lot of E.G. White's writing from the E.G. White estate, the CD volumes, right? Went through most of our material, and then I studied the Bible. So I know the church history and everything. Studied from the, the president's written, um, written testaments, the previous GC um, conference. Right, I study with a lot of pastors and elders, but I wanted to know the truth. Now, the way you phrase the question is a kind of technical. I'm gonna rephrase yeah. it, I'm gonna rephrase a statement. You have truth, and then you have church. Truth is found in the Bible, all right. Right, mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. additive, you don't add or yes. subtract, right. Mm -hmm. But the church is a different scenario. Why? Let me give you an idea. Church, when you say church, you deal with white people, you deal with the Romans. And the head of the church, the fundamental church, the, the universal church, which is Catholic. Catholic means universal. The, fund, the fundamental church is the Catholic church. I know through your breakaway, the Protestantism and so forth, you have many churches, right? So when you hear church, you hear white people, religion. When you hear mosque, you think of Muslim. When you hear of synagogue, you think of the so-called white people, then we call themselves Jews. When you have mm -hmm. temple, although a synagogue is a temple, when you hear temple, you hear of, you can use Hindu, right? When you have monastery, you hear a monk, right? So there are many different... Mm -hmm. Um, building or organization yes. that you worship. Yes. So when you hear church, you're talking about something that derived from Roman Catholic or the Romans. So if you're going to say if there is a true church, yes, the Talk only to true church would be the Catholic church because mm -hmm. all church break away from the Catholic church. Okay, but if you're going to ask me, what is the truth? Mm -hmm. I will point you to the word. That's right. Right? No, the word from uh, since I think a lot of Adventists is here, let me use scriptures that Adventists is familiar with. Um, Genesis 3.15, and I will put enmity between your seed, with as a paraphrase, and thy yes. seed. Right? No, there are two seeds there. The seed of Israel, which the Messiah should come, which you would agree. And you have the seed of the serpent. The seed of the serpent is technical, yes. so I'm not going to go into that. I'm going to deal with the seed of mm -hmm. God, right? Now, you see, the seed yes. came up as set. It's a genealogy. You have set, yes. right? You come down 
just come down quicker. You have Noah, you have Abraham, you have Isaac, you have Jacob. Right? It's a genealogy. It's not for everybody. It's mm -hmm. a genealogy. Because yeah. look at it. Abraham had Ishmael. And Abraham had six sons with Keturah, Midian, um, so forth, right? Mm -hmm. But they weren't counted as yes. the, 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 um, the chosen. It was Isaac, right? Not Ishmael, the firstborn, right? But the yes. secondborn, which is Isaac. Then Isaac had Jacob and Esau. But the chosen, although Esau was the first twin who came out, right? God didn't choose Esau. He chose Jacob. Jacob's name was changed, just like Abraham. Abraham to Abraham. Sarai to Sarah, right? So, to Israel. Yeah. Israel. And then from there now, you have the children of, of Jacob, Israel. which is the children of Israel, right. which is the lineage. Right. No. Where Seventh day Adventists deviate now to be just like a normal Christian is to say that the Jews, because they when Christ came, they rejected him, right? And they used their timeline and say they were cut off, right? Mm -hmm. They were cut off by the stoning of Stephen, right? No, mm -hmm. but yet. All Christendom hold the truth about the writings of Paul. Right? right? So we use Paul. And we use Galatians 1, verse 13 and 14, paraphrasing. Paul say, when I was in the, the, the religion of the Jews, and you know what is that? The Sanhedrin Council. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing that my brother, what is his name? Oshin? He was oh, yes. alluding to, right? The, the religious practices of the Sabbath. Now, in the time of Christ, you realize that the Israelites were in captivity. They were in Rome, and they first they went to Babylonian, they went to Greece, and they went to um, they went to Media Persia before Greece, then Rome, right? So they weren't free. So who was the head of the um, the Sanhedrin Council? It was Esau, the yes. Edomite. Because Herod, Herod wasn't a, a, a Hebrew, and he wasn't a Israelite. That's why he wanted to kill, because Christ would be the true lineage of the king line. Judah. Because mm -hmm. Christ is coming from David, when you look at the genealogy of Matthew. Matthew chapter 1. That's right? right? 1 to 6. Yes. Now, when you look at it, Christ said to them, say, if you... If you were our family then, or if you were our people, you would know who sent me. Right? We were in, we were in um, captivity. You know that the captivity in, in Moses' time, in Egypt. Yes. You know what the people said? We were never a bondman to anybody. Or were we in captivity? Why? Because they are Edomites. Paul went to King Agrippa. And him tell King Agrippa from Genesis to Revelation. King Agrippa, too, is the son of Herod and so forth, the grandson of Herod. He knows the law. He said, you almost persuaded almost. me. Almost, almost. almost. <laughs> you know why? You almost. Because what Paul oh, is saying God. is true. What Paul is saying is true. But he doesn't endorse the truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why, let me show you something. What I'm saying. The Sanhedrin Council and the Jewish religion that Paul said he was a part of. Paul said, when I was a part of the, the, the Jewish religion, I was zealous among my peers. And there I persecuted the children of God. He was in the Jewish religion, you know. So today, like it, Paul was in Christianity. Or to be specific, because remember, so Christianity come from Rome. Paul was in the Seventh-day Adventist religion, or the Jewish religion, because it was a Sabbath-keeping religion. It wasn't it? Yes, but yes. what happened? Yes, yes, yes. But look here. Christ, in, I think, Luke chapter, I think chapter 4. 
they, they, it is a scripture that he said that the spirit, they gave him the book of Isaiah 61 to read. And he said, the spirit of spirit God of is upon me. Right. Guess what they did to him? Because in Luke chapter 4, verse 16, say, according to his custom, he always went into the synagogue, right? On the yes. Sabbath. Mm -hmm. To read. Sabbath. Or to preach, mm -hmm. right? According mm -hmm. to his custom. But yes. guess what happened to his custom? The custom yes. that he practiced was a religious custom. But when yes. he preached the truth in there, they said to, to themselves, Isn't that, isn't that, um, I'm following him again. Isn't that, um, Joseph? Joseph's son. Son, his brother, his, his sister, I know. Who is he? They say, For a good, for a good, you know, to talk good about God and so forth, I mean, stone you, but to claim that you are the son of God. Mm -hmm. They are blasphemed and they, they took him speaking. from out of the synagogue to throw yes. him over one cliff, cliff. And he escaped through the midst of a crowd, right? Yes. You see, after that day, he never went into a synagogue. Mm -mm. The greatest, the greatest sermon on the mount was where? On the what? On the mount. Oh, what a door. He, he fed the 5,000. Mm -hmm. He fed the, 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 the 10,000. 5,000 men alongside he, he, women and he, children. The only time he went into another synagogue is when the Jews Wow. I hope, I, I hope we get him back time. quickly. Yeah, man. And yes, man. We need him back. We coming from back, another man. perspective with Kevin Yes, McCoy. we need him back. So you, go, go so, again, Kevin. Go so again. You, have, you have the church. Yes. And you have the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you something. Kevin, we need to go back to, to when you were saying that Jesus never went back into a synagogue. We, you, 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 broke, you broke there, and so right, many of us did not really get that right, right there. From, from then, they tried to kill him. Mm -hmm. when, because why? He was gaining a lot of popularity. Yes. If, Especially with the poor and the sinner. Right. Because Christ did not come for the righteous Jews. He came for the lost sheep of came for the lost sheep of Israel. Yes. Yes. The lost sheep of Israel. Right? No. People like even John 3 16. People say, God say, for everybody. Which is true, but not for every nation. In Acts chapter 2, it tells you that devoted Jews came from, from Arabia, right? Mm -hmm. Pamphylia, all over the world. Devoted Jews. What, what kind of affected let me tell you, you see when the, the Bible was transliterated, not translated, transliterated from the Hebrew, right, to the Greek and then from the Greek and some of the Hebrew to English and other language, what they did, they changed the name of the people, the places. Right. Just like today, like for instance, um, in 19... 1948, 1947, um, Persia was renamed Iran. Mm -mm. In 1948, Palestine was re part of Palestine was renamed, and it's not the real Palestine either, was renamed Israel. There is no land in the Bible named Israel. But Israel dwelt in Canaan. They conquered Canaan from the inhabitants and Moses and Joshua assigned each geographical areas to the different tribes. Yes. Apart from Levi who is, will assimilate, you know, because he doesn't have an inheritance. So, to go back, so church is Roman. Just like mosque is mm -hmm. Muslim. Mm -hmm. Temple you can temple, we just use temple because it's so vague and say Hindu. And we can say synagogue. Yes, yes, yes. 
for, for, a, for a fake Jew. So, what we have totally, because we wanted everybody under the umbrella, you have to understand, you know, Christianity was designed as the one world order religion. And English language is not a language. It was designed for the one world order language. That's why it's the international language and French is the business language. Mm -hmm. And that's why they are joining all the different areas of the world into different sections, segment, to make it easier for the unification of the world, the one world order. So you have Pan American, right? You have Africa, you have the Asian and the European, right? You have the Caribbean, our CARICOM. So when you branch, you put these things under some political regime and name, yes and no more time, you mm -hmm. have only five entity to put together to be one oh my gosh so christianity what they did to christianity christianity is an amalgamation of all the different pagan religion but with the fundamental or the base the bible so it's easy you know because once you transgress one of god's law you break all right you're guilty yeah. of all all. So get on what happened. So the nations around hear what happened now. What we do, let me tell you, is it because Israel is a spiritual people? We love God. In slavery, they beat us, change our name. Look at it. In slavery, they change your name. They change your way of life, your clothing. Right? Your way of worship. And you know what they gave you? Mm -hmm. Christianity. So if they took away your original identity and give you Christianity, Christianity cannot be good. What the Edens did was to share what they do. Like, for instance, they were saying science that the African-American, and they, you know that we are classified as African-American, right? Because everybody is black, yes. African-American, right? If we eat certain things, we are at a higher risk of getting cancer, diabetes, Art attack and so forth. You know why? Our system wasn't designed for everything like the Chinese and the white mm. man who can eat raw meat. Not to discriminate anybody, you know. Everybody. So the church is good. The church is very good. All churches are good. Why? Because they appeal to people's spiritual awareness or their spiritual mind, where they are. Yes. So right? you can say but, when 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 Christ say many it's one branch but many vines many vines but you have different branches one no, great vine the, all right the great vine mm -hmm. is Christ yes we branches are the people not the yes. organization let me show you something if you are a Seventh Day Adventist say um Pastor Sean now mm -hmm. and this system remember you know when you're a pastor you know you can sign things on behalf of the government is not so mm -hmm. For you know why yes. because you are a part of the government you are just another minister you have the minister of finance you have the minister of education minister, the of, minister of religion the minister of religion religion automatically when you're a minister of religion you can sign documentation on behalf of the, the government. So when you hear all these sweet about church and church and state don't mix, that's garbage. Because if the mandate, if the government forces any conference and say, you, what happened? you have to marry men, men and men, you have to do this, you have two choices to conform or don't to, conform. Or don't, be conform. Don't, become a, don't be a pastor anymore. Because a pastor is a clergyman. And eventually, all pastors, all church will be under one umbrella, which is the Catholic yeah. Church to ecumenism. Exactly. Because if the Pope so, come out and set a, 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 a and give a command, an instruction, there is nobody who can override it. No. Because Let me say right, something. The, the Pope, right. the, the let's, Queen. Let's, let's just take, let's just queen, take one, one or two more statements and then we'll have to move on um, as no we problem. are. That's the one or one and a half hour mark. Yes. 
Go ahead, go ahead, um, Oshi. The Pope is here and the Queen. When the Queen need any counsel, she go to the Pope. Father, forgive me, I have sinned because she wants spiritual counsel. And these two people can set a decree that no man can change. No man can change their decree. But yes, the state and church, they are one. They are trying to treat the people that is not one because they come together and they make decision as one. Because she have to go to him for counseling. What do you think on this matter? And then come together and said, this is it and no one can change it. So I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying there about church and the state. And the Catholic, is the Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church, is, is the, the head, church. is right. the church. Mm. Even if the Seventh-day Adventists don't see themselves as a part of it. If the Pope come out and said, one day of worship tomorrow, what can they do? Nothing. Protest. Rebel. Oh, we can't deal with this. Well, you can't change the decree. You Thank can't you. change it. Well, come on, my brother. Well, let me just thank all of you for joining on the program this evening. Um, Kevin, boy, I tell you, you really brought another perspective <laughs> on the whole thing tonight. And um, I'm sure not many you you already know that persons will not agree with you. Persons will not yeah, agree yeah. with me. Um, persons will not, will not agree with O'Shane. The whole idea of the program is so that you can see things from another person's perspective and how they see things and how they view it. And so we, we heard from Kevin, we heard from O'Shane, and we're happy that you were able to join us tonight. Um, thank you so much for, you know, gracing us with your presence. Um, there are further things that we will be looking at O'Shane and Kevin in the future. So I'm asking you to prepare yourselves for that as we... Um, go forward with this program. The first time hearing something like this. <laughs> first time I hear things like this, Kevin. Powerful. Some people yeah. it's the first time. And I'm sure many comments will come after regarding what you have said. And so we will be looking out for them. And indeed we will invite you again. So we're going to move um Kevin and Oshin into our another segment and so kevin we just want to tell you thanks for for joining with us tonight um as we go forward we will indeed be sharing more because there are more topics that we will discuss and more things that we will share and so persons will hear from you again for, hear from others and we'll hear the various views god bless you thank you for joining and we will see you at another time all right blessings kevin yeah, man. Have Peace a, and love. Have a good night. Peace and Respect love. Respect our machine. All right, man. Blessings. Blessings. Yeah, <laughs> peace. Peace. Yeah, man. All right. So, Oshin, oh. we're going to be moving into our prayer session um, at this Thank time. You, and so, I'm going to invite you um, tonight to pray for families um, and anybody who have a prayer request just to... Just to um, just to make that notification right there as we, you know, as we share, right, in this prayer session tonight. Um, soon and very soon, we're going to be trying to see if we can incorporate some 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 music in it. I know I have to go put up this copyright business, but um, we want to move into the prayer session tonight. And, um, you know, as we go forward, we just want to ask God to take care of our families wherever they are and if there is any other person who have who have um anything else that they would like us to pray for please um do so i know orlando had said that he had a question i don't know if orlando is still there um orlando you can ask a question you can join in if you are still there that is no problem right right all right. Um, Killer Star says church and state operate similar for real. I am not sure if um, Sean would remember in around 2015 me being outcast from church because of the view I hold and the way I looked. Um, I, 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 
some somewhat you know have somewhat of of, of, of the whole the whole situation um there i remember i remember um uh, let me just it, it, it was a camp you'll refresh my memory i think we were at some camping thing or something like that something of the sort all right um anybody has any if you have any prayer requests we will just want to um send that up tonight and so um my brother we're going to be looking at at at, at, at family um right there yes 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 indeed indeed um so all we're all we're just asking you to do my friend is to you know just hold on just continue to focus continue to look to jesus continue to look to god who is indeed the author and finisher for, of your faith listen at the end of the day it is god it is jesus um Amen. church at the end of the day really and truly won't um be the defining mark of your Amen. relationship with god what will be your defining mark is is your your claim your belief in in in, in jesus christ and you know if we look at things from another person's point of view there's so much we can learn so much we can see it doesn't mean Amen. that you're going to be swept away by every wind of doctrine no but that you are going to allow yourselves to be led by the word of god to be led by jesus and brethren as we continue to allow ourselves to be led by jesus truly we will learn we will grow and we will develop all right my brother please just pray tonight as the spirit leads for our families and any other thing that is laid on your heart to pray I thank you thank you so much thank you so much for this opportunity again because i was here sitting god please make him ask me for prayer please make him ask me for prayer please make him ask me for prayer let me hear you say my god i was here just asking said please make him ask me to pray please god make him ask me for prayer so <laughs> Yes, man, yeah. God. go ahead, man. So, go ahead, go ahead. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. There's none like you, none before you. Father, creating us a clean earth and renewing, renew a right spirit within us even now. Wash me and cleanse me and purge me this up that I become even whiter than snow. Sanctify this mind, heart, body, soul, and spirit, mighty God. My righteousness is like a filter rug before your presence. Isaiah said, whoa, I am undone. I dwell among unclean people and clean lists, but you sanctify Isaiah as a lump of clay. So sanctify this lump of clay. But as we lift your people before you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus, mighty God, some trust in horses and some trust in chariot, but in you we trust tonight, Father. God, you know every situation, you know every needs, you know every wants, Father. They that are sick in body, God, I speak healing even now from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, mighty God. They that are mighty God, in need of a breakthrough, Father, I pray even now you stir up yourself and send a breakthrough, mighty God. Send destiny help us for those who need destiny help us. Father, some that are crying out, mighty God, for the last sheep and the last souls, mighty God, that need, Father God, your guide father mighty god you said young man i call upon you because you're strong father you said behold i stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice and open the store and let me in i will come and sup with him so sit with a young man sit with a young girl tonight father even now in the name of jesus god has this virus mighty god coronavirus and this pandemic mighty god is roaming true father god let us not look mighty god at the problem but let's look at the solution you are the solution, Father, even now, mighty God. Vaccine is not the answer. We are not saying, mighty God, you should take it or not take it. But we are saying Jesus is the answer to all, mighty God. Jesus will heal the soul, the mind, the heart, and the spirit. Father, even now in the name of Jesus, mighty God, Father, we thank you even now for the viewers tonight and the question that they sent forth, mighty God, and those that take scene, mighty God, to share a part of this program. Mighty God, bless your man servant God. You give them the, the wisdom. You give us the, the inspiration. You give him the knowledge, mighty God, to go forth with this program. God, let this 
program reach every heart, every mind, and every soul. Let it be a difference, Father. Let mighty God, the Holy Spirit, dwell. Bless his wife even now, even now, in the name of Jesus, mighty God. Mighty God, anoint our fresh even now, Jesus. Cover them from repercussion. Cover them from backlash. Every plans, plot, schemes, and devices of the enemy even now, mighty God. Father, we thank you even now in Jesus' precious name, God. Thank you even now, mighty God. We thank you and we glorify your name, mighty God. Whatever I fail to ask that is in your will, fail not to grant even now in the name of Jesus. All the viewers, mighty God, all the viewers out there, Father, I pray you rest upon them tonight and save the unsaved. Reclaim the backslider even now in Jesus' precious name, I pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, amen. Jesus. And amen. Indeed, Thank indeed. You. Thank you so much, um, Brother you, Ashe, Jesus. for joining Thank me. You. And thank, thank you for you your inspiration. Many persons wouldn't yes. know, but you are a strong um, person behind um, me. And your support has been truly great. And um, I thank you. Thank you so much for your support. God bless you, thank man of God. God. And thank yeah, you for God joining you the too. program. Um, yes. we're, I'm going to call you back. So just yeah. be curious. All right? All right. God All right. bless, bless you. As we go bless forward. Him. All right, blessings, okay. peace. Thank you, everybody, for joining in on the program tonight. Another perspective, and you would have heard it right here, where persons would have shared their different views, and it has been exciting. And we are only going, we're only going to get better. All right. Um, my friend had asked a question earlier on. I want to ask, um, which is the right um, Sabbath day? Orlando, as soon as we're going, we're going to do a program on, on, on Sabbath and Sunday, Sabbath versus Sunday, Sunday versus Sabbath. And so at that time, um, we will see our, our best, your question can be answered and to see if you can see things from another perspective. Our next topic, next week, Monday evening, we'll be looking at the Ten Commandments. Are there Ten Commandments? Or are there more? What are your views? Read up, study up, and join me next week or another perspective as we look at the Ten Commandments. God bless you, everyone. Have a wonderful night. And thank you for joining me on this program. I hope and trust that it has been a great inspiration to you and that you will continue to send in your love and your support. Feel free to comment as you wish. Feel free to share. And if you wish to join in on the program, just send in and let me know and we will have your face on the program ready to share what is on your heart. God bless you, everyone, and have a good night.